für Faller und Welcome, 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 you sports heads. I know it's been a long time, and you're probably not even watching yet, thinking that we fell off the face of the earth. People have tried to take us out, Cope, but we are here in full effect, and we're back, <laughs> and we are back. Now, before I get into all the pleasantries, yes, just to let everyone know, whoever's watching, number one, we are not going to spend six hours of stuff into one hour of what's happened in the last six weeks. We just can't do that. No, we don't they don't pay us enough to do that. No, not okay? at all. So, with that being said, uh, um, no we are going. Can, that I'll pay you at all. Yeah, <laughs> actually, yes, we don't get paid at all. So, <laughs> your sponsors are greatly appreciated. Your sponsorship can be reached at, at boomerdondon.com <laughs> to drop in your your lovely donations, or maybe we should do what everybody else does. Boom, you know what they do? Go fund me for something. It's a good idea. Go fund me for we are poor coming in clutch. We're not clutch. Like I kind of like. I it. didn't even think of that. It's a great I, idea. I, I, somebody, somebody out there might somebody, feel bad and be like, "These are all saps. Look at these. Look at these special needs. Look at these. Yeah, look <laughs> at we these sappy. Help them out. This fast Portuguese slurring bastard. Wait, what the hell did he just say? I have no idea. <laughs> and the other guy with an amazing haircut all the time. He must go to sleep like that. You know. I do. I know you do. do. Uh, fa- you look fantastic today, by the way. And Thank I like you. the fact that you're supporting the Red Sox. But we do only have an hour, folks. And it's going to be punctual because we have another show that comes right up after this, right? Boom. Is it a seven o'clock, seven thirty show? That, seven thirty, eight thirty. Uh, yeah. Okay. Forever. Okay. So let's get into it. And you of ready? Course, you ready to it, do this? But before we do that, I want to make sure that for those of you who don't know who we are, um, I am your host for Coming in Clutch, and I have my other host, my co-host to my left, your right. I think I got that right. Kobe T, man, what's up, man? No. Nelly Dog is in the house. I know all of you have missed us, and we're going to go right into our amazing sponsor. Which is being brought to you by the show, Coming in Clutch, Thursday nights from 6 to 7. Subject to change, but right now it's 6 to 7 on Thursdays. And we are being brought to you by Troy City Mortgage, bringing you the best home buying experience. Still going, still intact, even with the high interest rates, Cope. They're still doing amazing things for everyone out there that's looking for a home. Unbelievable. They are finding the deals. They are making it work. Let me tell you the magic that these guys have been pulling off lately. Has been saving a lot of real estate, and, and it's Let going. Tell you. And this is coming from a guy who's a real estate agent, Mr. And Mr. Boom. Say that, that team yep. has saved the world because I'm dealing with some lenders out in Rhode Island area, and it's here. And not we're, so good. We're already <laughs> on like our third, fourth, fifth extensions. Like, yeah, it's, it's bad because they just don't have the experience and the knowledge to do what they're doing. And totally, I'll tell you, Dave and his team are killing it. We are very, very, very pleased, and we're very honored to have Troy City, which is the best place 
to get you a mortgage in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. And it's true because we've seen it happen. Led by David Pereira, the team at Choice City have local roots. Indeed, they do. With deep knowledge and expert solutions to get you the best, not a best, not a very good, the best mortgage possible. Give them a call at 508 508- 207 5864. I still remember the number. It's 508. Look at me. 508 207 5864. I'm looking at you. Carl. I don't know how you I don't know how you remember Unbelievable. that. You don't remember a lot of things. I don't. I'm a very forgetful individual. <laughs> I just have too many things. I'm very cluttered in my head. Too much stuff going on. I have so much stuff going on all the time. And as when and then here's my problem. And we're going to get into sports, of course. When I get a little glimpse of space. I have to fill it with something stupid. Yeah, because you don't know what to do. I, I'm, I, I, I call Boomer. Hey, Boomer, do you want to go, like, rent a cow? Yeah. Like, like uh, you know, or something. The answer like, is always yes. Always yes. <laughs> yeah. Which, yeah. by the way, I need another cow. Yeah, so, so there we have it. And when there he's, ta- have. he's well, talking about beef, processed beef, not a cow that sits in the back that's going to be milking, <laughs> that's going to be pissing and shitting everywhere. Um, He's talking about an actual processed beef for his lovely Lovely extended family and family that he has, Boomer. Uh, but I know we don't talk much about Boomer's life, and I'm not here to talk about but Boom, you do some amazing things, man. Um, I've been friends with Boom for a long time. Dude, you do a lot of great things. Kids, a lot of things behind the scenes. The great ones always do things behind the scenes without speaking. Keep Very that in true. mind. That's how Very that works, true. right, Boom? You mean if I don't do it on camera, it doesn't exist, right? <laughs> uh, uh, well, <laughs> that's how that works. Listen, th- that's, why I don't post what I, that's why I don't post certain things. I'm because gonna, I already know, it. if I go post something, and it's something of gratification, then it's going to be, I know it's going to happen. They're going to say, look at him. That's why I don't do it. So what do I do? I speak to my closest friends and tell them what I do, and they have to hear it. That's how it goes. But anyway, so here we are. Uh, it is our first show in quite some time. And uh, we had four eyeballs up there. I want Now we have two. I must have lost them already. I guess so, I didn't like that new uh, talk. They, they didn't like that new intro. <laughs> but uh, we have a lot to discuss. And now we're back up to five. So things are working. Here we go. So we have five <laughs> eyeballs now. Uh, we might get the double digits today. The phone number here has not changed. Um, the texting has not changed either. Believe it or not, I did pay the bill. Um, a whopping ten ninety nine a year. Uh, and it's the number is 508 974 30 that is the number. Or as you like to say, 30, 40. Exactly. So um, without further ado, let's get started right into this. So a lot has unraveled yes, in the has. sports world. Yes, and we're has. not, again, we, we cannot. We don't have enough time. We don't so. have enough time. Not enough, not enough time. Not enough air time. Somebody else is coming on after us. And by the way, uh, they don't pay us enough. In this case, zero. So with that being said, um, I think I want to start with football. Okay. I think it's 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 uh, conducive to start there. I mean, so, that's the best idea, right? Let's do it. It, it is. So. As we all know, in recent events, here's what has unraveled. The um, New England Patriots, your New England Patriots, um, are in Green Bay with a joint practice with the new revitalized Green Bay Packers that have Jordan Love and their two, which I've heard all week, receivers in Watson and Dubs. Dobbs. Dobbs. And apparently the, uh, the first... I guess practice. I don't know if they practiced today. They must have practiced. Yes, today. they had a good practice today. So yesterday's practice did not go so well at the tail end with the offense, and everyone is losing their marbles. So we're going to talk a little bit about the dream practices as we lead it into preseason game number two, which is on Saturday. And of course, we have the acquisition of uh, Mister Zeke Elliott, who we had seen that the Pats were involved, Cope, and wanted to get another asset in here, another piece in here, and the Audrey Hopkins did not work. I'm not sure if we discussed the, the nature of that. No, I think, I mean, we haven't been on it so long. I mean, obviously our schedules haven't, haven't really jived. Um, a lot has happened. We all know DeAndre Hopkins is not here. Um, and I have kind of a take on that, probably a little different from everybody. It's, I, I find it funny how everybody has the same take. Like nobody can just be different. They, they or, all follow each other. It's, it's, it's crazy, right? It Everyone is. follows the same thing. Every time. Yep, I agree with you. And we talked about DeAndre Hopkins, and my take on that is very simple, to just hash another old egg is that I think Bill O'Brien had a conversation with Bill Belichick. Mind you that Bill O'Brien had the most vision and experience with the Audrey Hopkins, and he saw the Audrey Hopkins at his all-time high. Up close, man. It's that simple, right? To to make it clear, I believe it was 1,610 yards receiving that year that he went off. Mm -hmm. Something like 16 touchdowns or 10, 12 touchdowns. It was a, a, a gigantic number. And I think he saw him at this stage. And I think he advised Bill, and we know that the Pats are a little bit frugal when it comes to spending. And when I say the Pats, it's really, again, Robert Kraft. Correct. Bill Belichick does not write the checks. I know it sounds unbelievably odd for some of you knuckleheads, 
But Bill Belichick does not write checks. Say that one more time. Bill Belichick does not. It's does working. not. It is working. Does not write checks to pay anybody on the New Correct. England Patriot payroll. It's done by Kraft Corp or Kraft Productions or whatever he's called. It's by Robert Kraft. So Robert Kraft is just as frugal. And now Bill could counsel and advise Robert Kraft. And I think this is what happened with DeAndre Hopkins. I think Bill O'Brien saw D Hop's workout. He assessed it and he probably told Bill the number that he wants. I don't think he's worth it. I think we have pieces here for a fraction of the cost that can provide the same production. And I think Bill Belichick, as much as I think he wanted DeAndre Hopkins, because he spoke highly of him, even when they faced each other, they got caught on the mic. Mm -hmm. I think. But just because he speaks highly of him doesn't, doesn't mean you have to exactly. pay him 12, 13, 14, 15 so million I, dollars. I, I think Bill O'Brien's decision and in, 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 in opinion went into Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick liked the, what he heard. And I think ultimately they said no. But here's the thing. Robert Kraft could have easily gone back and over-trumped Bill and said, we're, we're going to sign him. So the numbers didn't work. So now you're off to Tennessee on a loser franchise. They're not going to win much anyway. I think Vrabel's a good coach, but they're not going to win much anyway. Yeah, but so so here's my thing on this because people love to just automatically. Well, they would have been a lot better with DeAndre Hopkins. So here's my thing. So didn't they just draft two kids in the sixth round? Right. That now all of a sudden the media wants to say how great Keishawn Boutte. I love to say that Boutte. Oh, I know it's gonna be right. And Demario Pop Douglas has been yes. during their practices, yes, correct? Yes. And how they should make this team. So. If you have a DeAndre Hopkins on this team at X amount of million dollars, guess who's on the outs? One of them or both of them. Correct. Okay. So you can't have your cake and eat it. In this case, you really can't. All right. So again, Not for that, though. do you want DeAndre Hopkins or do you want to say, oh, well, we got these two rookies that are actually flashing for once, right? For once, we actually have two rookie wide receivers who are actually doing something in, in, in during training camp. But this is nothing new. The Pats notoriously were able to find wide receiver assets the, or in, the, in the later rounds. In the later rounds. And it looks like Malik Cunningham, who wasn't even drafted, who was picked up as a free agent rookie. What are they? What are they called? An undrafted, undrafted. Or an undrafted rookie. Picked him up and he's doing some flashes. And here's, they gave him the most amount of money, too. 200,000 200, uh, guaranteed. Okay. Here's my point I am okay with the Audra Hopkins not being here if indeed Bill O'Brien. Is that confident in his scheme, mm -hmm. in his assets, and, and what he thinks is going to forecast production? Because you are paying a player for two reasons, and I don't know if they're equal. You pay a player for their past production, that's a percentage, but you're really paying for a player for what they're going to give you Correct. in future productions. Future productions. Correct. Okay, we can get that clear. So now we're going to our Zeke Elliott. Now, Zeke Elliott is a player that really wasn't highly sorted out, and some may deem that he is washed up. I will tell you that after his um, degraded and downplaying, downsizing of plays and his explosiveness, something happened in Dallas. Could it be injuries? Could it be fitness? Could it be a combination of a lot of things? I don't think the Dallas Cowboys are a team that anyone can just play in. You know who else didn't work out really well for the Dallas Cowboys? Who's that? Danny Amendola. Do you remember him? Yes, I do. I'll tell you who he is, you knuckleheads. He's the guy that has two championships, at least one. Yeah. It was phenomenal in the comeback, <laughs> twenty-eight to three, back you no know, coming coming back in the Super Bowl against the Atlanta Falcons. So Danny Amendola did not make it there, and he actually didn't even make it over in St. Louis. They called him Mister Glass. So my point is that something happened there. That culture is go big or go home. It's Dallas. It's Texas. It's big. It's bold. It's just how it is. And I think him coming to a new face, Kobe, for three million bucks, what do you got to lose? It's three million dollars guaranteed. Three million in incentive base, and you know how the New England. Yeah, but I, I honestly love the Yeah, but I think it was even cheaper than that because the money came out today, like the real money. Okay. So I believe it was like a six hundred k signing bonus, and I believe his salary is like one point five. Okay. With so, with incentives. So reason to watch the Patriots. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So Boomer isn't, right? He's going to watch. Go. See, we, we knew we would get him eventually. We yeah. just didn't know it was going to take Zeke Elliott. Zeke Elliott. So <laughs> it, it, it took Zeke Elliott. <laughs> and, and, and I'm just simply stating that he could be an asset that could be a different type of player in, than, than Stevenson is. They, 
a lot of people already were complaining about the fact that the running backs did not look so hot in that first game against the Texans. I will tell you, I don't think anyone looked well or, or productive other than Keona White. Keona White, yeah. Keona White looked fantastic. He was in nine of the 31 dangerous plays defensively. If that's a word. He was involved in in losses, sacks, deflections. He was everywhere. The guy is a freak of nature. He was a second-round pick. I was all in on him. I spoke it here. I spoke it here. I spoke it here. I told all of you that in the second round, that guy's size, when I saw his face, that that's the player, by the way, for you Bobos who have <laughs> short-term memory. Okay. You see, I'm already getting amped up. I'm already going into phase two of this. I'm rolling into this thing. Hey, for Johnny about... Noons, there we go. There he is. Johnny, I got something for you that that um, that Cole will bring for you tomorrow. Something that has, you know, the name on it. It's going to be something to put on your head. To add we to your... all know you love the stuff for your head. Well, you do. Indeed, you do. And as well as receiving it. But uh, but anyway, so Johnny is here. Well, Johnny's here. Good to see you, Johnny. So as you were going into, um, people uh, have short-term memory here. And I had mentioned, this was the player. This was the player. That was crying. Remember how he had, he had tears in his eyes? Correct. And these anti patriots like Sean McVay and those other, oh, look, at, he's not even happy that he's being drafted. Funny, funny, because he's a mammoth of a man. When I saw his numbers, six, seven, he's a beast, man. 270, 250. Are you freaking kidding? Me? The guy looks like he's been playing. You know what? He, he does look like Jason Pierre Paul, a JPP kind of guy. So, with fingers. With, yeah, with. <laughs> With fingers, stop! Do not go to that table saw. <laughs> do not go anywhere near that table no, no saw. No fireworks. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm making things up. Like how do, how do people cut their fingers? Hmm. Uh, cut, cutting it with their knife. Yeah, that's right. Fireworks. Hold the firework too long. See, see, see what, what happens. happens. You know. <laughs> you know. That's how that goes. You know. So I, I actually was having this conversation with John today. So the so the thing, the other thing that's been driving me crazy about this whole Zeke Elliott and Dalvin Cook thing is that automatically you have these patriot people or haters, or whatever they are, saying, oh, what a waste of a pick. Pierre Strong, Kevin Harris, and you're already going after Zeke and, Elliott. And, and that's what I was talking about. Yeah, right. And I know okay. we're going to go with But that. if you're going to say that about the Patriots, well, then you better go say that about the Jets, okay? Because I've had Brees Hall and Michael Carter thrown down my throat for over a year last year. Correct. How great of a pick Brees Hall was. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, he got hurt, but he's back. So why are you going to spend $9 million on Dalvin Cook if you have Brees Hall and Michael Carter? If you want to talk about... Do you know people. why? Because they want to appease Aaron Rodgers. And whatever Aaron wants, he's going to get. Okay? And so, again, if you're going to criticize the Pats, you got to criticize the Jets, too. If right? you, absolutely. And if you remember, if you remember, it, it, you know, going back to your criticisms, I think as fans, and we have some smart fans here. I know I rack on like you know Boston fans, but we have some sophisticated Boston fans when they want to be. There is no question that when you have an argument, I know after a couple of these, when you when you have an argument or a discussion, <laughs> when you have an argument or a discussion about a particular topic, and in this case, people were complaining about you know, listen, when you, you when you're picking a player and you're going out and grabbing a positional player that that you just got that you just picked up, there's some questions there. I'm not disagreeing with the argument, but you need to use the argument across the board. And the Jets also drafted in the second overall pick. <clears throat> That's right. Baby face. Oh, how sweet thy baby face. And Zach Wilson. You had four other quarterbacks that you could have selected. You had Very a true. second overall pick because your record was, oh, and you suck. <laughs> okay. So that was your record that year. And you could have picked Zach Wilson, Trey Lance. Well, Trey Lance, went, I think, went number one, right? No, no. Trevor Lawrence went number one. That's right. Trey Lance. Are you trying to mess with me? Justin Fields and Mac. And you decided, huh, we're going to grab the kid that looks like he's 10. Puma has many, many kids. His young boys <laughs> look older than Zach Wilson. <laughs> they, they do. Oh, I'm, there's no question about but, but, it. But that's my point. He's a second, the second right. overall pick. And, right? they ha and they had to go out and go draft somebody else because they were going to lose their minds. And they go and get a short-lived honeymoon situation just like Tom Brady was in the Buccaneers. My prediction is this. It may be a good first year, and it will fall apart. I'm actually hoping it falls apart as soon as possible because <laughs> that's going to make me laugh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jay Rizzo, there he is. Jay, I will tell you, I am rooting for your Giants more than I'm rooting for those Jets. If you can jump on the bandwagon at 508-974-3040. There's only one Portuguese sports talk, and that's to my right. Uh, that's right. <laughs> so I will tell you, I will tell you that um, you're absolutely right. The, they went to go fill voids because Aaron Rodgers wanted it, and they have not drafted and, and, well. And, and the speaking hydrate. of this, have you seen this now? So now Aaron Rodgers is on social media trying to recruit David uh, Bakhtiari there, the whatever he is from the, from the uh, whatever uh, the offensive lineman from uh, Green Bay. Okay. okay. Oh yes. So it's like yes. if you want all these guys from Green Bay, Why don't you, just you should have just stayed there, right? Right. So I will tell you, I I indirectly will have a little bit of a favoritism and rooting for Jordan Love. Not necessarily this weekend, but I'm kind of rooting for Just him. in general. Do you know why? Hey, I kind of like Jordan Love. He got he got chastised last year for the, some of the games that he played in, mm -hmm. and I hope he does well. Just to stick it up Aaron Rodgers to smoke it and say, you were there and this guy had the same weapons that you had. As a matter of fact, they have less weapons because you took two of them. And now this guy's producing. So I do hope that Jordan Love does well. Keep in mind, I am not being a Green Bay fan. But I love rooting for teams who players who I can't stand in Aaron Rodgers leave. That guy is an arrogant prick. And he still thinks he has it. I can't wait for the New York have you, media. Have you watched any of uh, Hard Knocks? I have not watched it. I have not had the privilege so to watch it. So basically, you know, watching Hard Knocks, I guess it's more of like a porno for Aaron Rodgers. That's just the, the 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 mystique of Aaron Rodgers, if that's the right word. That's, a that's, great that, word. that's all. It, that's all it basically is. Is it's it's them basically them just like oh, oh, my, oh god, my god, who's this guy? Yeah. So I will again going back to the Zeke thing. I think for the pickup, Roy had mentioned that it was going to be a possibility. I didn't think it was going to be a possibility just based on dollars and cents. But again, as players go on, they have to get employed, and he got employed by the New England Patriots, and I don't think he has any pressure here. If he doesn't work out, he goes bye-bye, and the Pats go off their rookie second-year guys and see what happens. But at the end of the day, I but love, listen, the, but I love Stevenson just as much as you. You can't rely on the guy. He's not that kind of guy all, right now. For the whole season, man. Look look at him last year. The guy barely made it through the whole season. He did. It's a lot to ask any running back. Very few running backs. McCaffrey, even Jonathan Taylor is not making it through a full year. And okay. I, I had this talk with John earlier today about – you know, if you're going to pay Zeke that much, you know, it wasn't that much money. Why don't you keep Damian Harris? The way I feel about Damian Harris is the guy couldn't stay on the effing field. He's another one. Right? He couldn't stay on the field. Yep. So do you go with a guy that can't stay on the field or a guy in Zeke who's proven to pretty much be pretty durable? Yeah, Zeke's issue is really himself where he kind of his conditioning kind of goes out the window a little bit, which I don't it doesn't. Appear. Yeah, but he's not like getting hurt. Like, no, but he's much. not right. He's not a guy that gets that hurt. And Damian Harris, we liked him here as well. He had a monster game he in, did. in that football, in that Buffalo game with negative 40 degrees. And we wanted him to stay here. But at the end of the day, he always was, had hamstring issues, uh, just, right? Those hammies were just a problem. Yeah. So 508 974 3040. There, there it is. Go. That was awesome. 3040 is the number here. Um, oh, the Red Sox were down 9 1. Now it's 9 7. We're going to talk some Red Sox. Amazingly enough, this team is actually turning things around. It have been turning it around for a while. But we will get to more football and more baseball. And we'll take a break. On the other side, we will see you. Don't go anywhere much to talk about. See you there. To zero, and with all the nice inventory I have, that you criticize me about for buying around Christmas time, can we just celebrate the night? Should be should be easier to do even better next month. April is even better, guys. But in the meanwhile, yeah, congratulations, very good job. Tomorrow we'll good lose job. again. Good job. <laughs>
And we're back, folks. We are live coming in Clutch Sports on the Eric B. Media platform. And I am your host, Nelson. To my left, your right, I got Kobe. We're back. We just came off our break at 974-508-974-3040 is the number here. We were just discussing some Patriot talk. And we were talking about the joint practices. And as you know, the joint practice for day one apparently did not go very well offensively. They had some issues. And I guess defensively, also it did not go well where I guess Christian Gonzalez, the first overall pick, uh, well, the, the first round pick. Yeah, I guess they just picked on him all they day. They picked on him all day, and he got beat. Listen, Dobbs and Watson are proven receivers. We talk about how the Pittsburgh Steelers can draft receivers. So can Green, Green Bay. Bay. Typically, usually. The Pittsburgh have done very well there. So, listen, again, much like I've discussed with Kobe offline, off the air, you don't take the highs too high, and you don't take the lows too low. What I mean by that is if the Pats are having an amazing practice or an amazing day, I kind of take it with, okay, they had a good day. Maybe it was a little bit over their head. Maybe they were playing above their head. On the other contrary situation, if they don't have a great day, it doesn't mean that they're going to suck. So the line is still seven and a half out there for those of you who want to bet. I'm letting you know I am betting and have bet the over on that. I think seven and a half games is a little low. I don't think this team is going to win just seven games. I don't see it. I think I don't think they're going to go zero and six in their division, and that's what a lot of people have. Well, I mean, think about it. There's an injury today. Teron Armstead, main cog of that Miami uh, Dolphins line. Yeah, I saw that. Today. Hurt. Yep. I don't it's know how bit, serious that injury yep. is, but I we'll mean, see. That's a that's a some, major injury. Right? To give an eyeball, and, and so, that was a guy that just I believe had surgery. He did. He did. So, what do you all think about the Pats so far? I will tell you what, here's what I think. I think Mac Jones is your starter. It's not even a question anymore. Zappi doesn't have the size. He may have the grit. He doesn't have the size to be an NFL quarterback. I'm sorry. I know that might upset some of you with, with your Zappi fever. Was it was the was the fever vaccinated finally? I believe it's been vaccinated with lots of penicillin at a thousand milligrams, <laughs> if that's possible. Okay. So Mac is going to be your quarterback. I know we had a good like day not. today, but I just I don't know what it is. Like the, it's like the force they're forcing Zappy it, it's down our throats. Your, the, media, fr- the, right? f- the first round pick is not going to get benched. And again, I'm not telling you that I'm going to be a super duper Mac fan. I'm going to support Mac because he's on this team, but I'm not going to give Mac a tremendous leash to allow him to keep having chances. At some point, he's going to have to prove himself and keep improving. And last year was an anomaly to the negative side where there isn't much you can take out of last year. Mm-hmm, correct. You have to take this year as a true year two for, for, for Mac and to see what he can do and to see with more a functional type of offense what they can do. Now, if it doesn't work out and they're losing in their own four, I want to tell you this. If they go own four, I don't think Zappy comes in still. Yeah, I mean, but you got to see how it is. If they go zero and four, and they're actually and they're just playing good, they're playing good football. And there's a but, problem with the offensive line, but, for but example, yeah, or they're just losing games by that much. I mean, you're still going to keep Mac in there. Yeah, you got to see the reasons of the loss. Correct. You can't just say they're zero four. Switch it up. If Mac is being loose with the ball, not protecting the ball, making rookie like decisions, then at that stupid, point, yeah, stupid, stupid decisions, stupid, stupid decisions. And at that point, we will be on this show. We will criticize. But until then, I need to see more from Mac. And I'm willing to be that patient because we had 20 years of greatness as fans. And doesn't he look like he's in a pretty good mood this year? He's a different, different guy. He Mac, just right? seems to be a different guy. I wonder why. Yeah. Jeez. I wonder what that could be. Okay. Maybe because he has a functional, <laughs> professional type of offensive line. <laughs> uh, I mean, offensive maybe, scheme, maybe. whatever. You know, so he has something there offensively that allows him to feel more comfortable with the situation. And they're going to keep racking on him and what he says and how he says things, you know, and, 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 and all that. And they're going to keep racking on him for that. I don't care how he talks and how he doesn't talk. I wish you could talk a little bit more adult like. Yeah, but some people yeah, just what, don't have it. Man. He, just, he just doesn't have it. What do I want to tell you? I don't have it either. And I'm still here behind the, <laughs> behind the mic. What are you going to do? <laughs> but I, 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 I am intrigued about the Zeke acquisition. And yes, he's only going to be used on occasional situations. But isn't that perfect? But that's perfect. But that's what you need. Exactly. The Pats had a difficult time getting first downs. They had a difficult time last year sustaining drives because the offense was anemic in many facets. Bad route running, bad protection, bad decision making at the quarterback helm. Even even Stevenson had a game that but that, that but also clear. right. If you don't don't the Rams right the L.A. Rams and the 49ers, aren't there isn't their offense predicated on the run game first and then. 
you know, let's see what opens up down the field. According right? to, yes, according to that. Shanahan, so yeah. maybe this is what we're going to, right? I mean, you got two big backs now, right? And I mean, it's unfortunate Ty Montgomery can never stay healthy. I was kind of intrigued by just to see what he could do. Is he, uh, He's, he, he hasn't practiced since like day one. Something's going on. With yeah. That, yeah. But but my point in this is like, so they, ha- they have two, you know, obviously Stevenson's the cog and you have Zeke to spell him, sure, right? Sure. So maybe this is how the offense is going to be driven. Right. Maybe. And then, you know what? Setting up, setting up the the play actions. Yeah. And I want to see more play action. I would like to see more shotgun situation, the, more RPO situation, the movement pre snap. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be, a, there's going to be a bunch of different he, things that we, that we didn't see last. They year. cannot have a vanilla type of offense. Just can't happen. No. Okay. So I think that the preseason is, is what it is. Bill always takes preseason with a grain of salt. He's always done a lot more executing and situational type of stuff during the, the practices versus the games. I think Mac's going to start this week. He should. He should start. We should be able to see some of that. Let's see some of those ones. Let's see how they go. And then we'll, and we'll see Jordan Love as well. So it'll give you a chance to see how things are starting to look. They're not going to drop all their eggs in that one basket on game two. So don't get freaked out about it. <laughs> and there's only three preseason games. They suck. They suck. Yeah. <laughs> so this defense, I still think, is going to be a very, very good defense. Okay, I'm not going to sit here and start calling things elite. I'm just simply saying that I think they're going to be fine. There are some concerns, and I still think that back, you know, in the back there, they, they're a little tiny at times. They're, but yeah, but I think but as physical. I was saying to you, right, the defense looked a lot worse last year because the offense, the offense was so anemic. Exactly. Right. They, so if, they you, would if your offense drives. is a lot better this year, and your defense is only getting better, of course your defense is going to look more. Of course, you want to use the word elitist. Right? Yeah, right, right, right. But you know what I'm saying. But we're, not, we're saying. not saying that. I mean, we got to see how this defense really is. Well, right. But even I know they. I understand they have a tough schedule this year. But again, any given Sunday, man. Right. Any given Sunday. So I will tell you that um, I am excited to see how things are going to unravel because there seems to be more function going on there, more functionality, and I want to see these rookies. And I'm hoping that some of these rookies pop to be able to shut some of these nays- naysayers. There's a lot of fans who still don't believe in Bill. They're still, they're still they're wrapping still, themselves around still, Tom Brady. Yeah, they're still wrapped. They're, they're, unfortunately, it sucks for a lot of these Patriot fans because they cannot let Brady go. They just can't. All right? And then because so because they can't let Brady go, guess what happens? They think Mac sucks. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I did see something about the Gronk, the Gronk comment from Jay Rizzo. Um, yes. So there was a little something that came out that said that if Gronk were to come out of retirement, which he won't, that he would only go play for Brian Dable, who happens to be the head coach of the New York Giants. And I think that's where he's getting that from. Um, it's a nice gesture. It's a nice story. Uh, Gronk coming back, even he called himself being washed up. So it's it's wishful thinking. I think what you guys have to do um, is definitely um, is definitely work on making sure that the running back stays, you know, stays happy and stays healthy. And Saquon Barkley, there was a lot of problems with that situation where he held out of course he wound up having to cave in because the running back but it wasn't even that much i think he got like a million more yeah it wasn't much yeah uh, um sorry steve yeah i mean we we actually did have uh yeah we did we did but we t- we decided to change it up a little bit i know uh the celtics and the the bruins aren't playing right now uh so we're just we're just trying to we we we, we typically like to change our setup so it doesn't it isn't the same set every week exactly right so, um, but we, we do try to change it up. We do talk Bruins. We talk Celtics here as well. We only have an hour, as you can probably imagine, from six to seven. But here we are. We're gonna go quick. So I would, I do want to flip some gears here. Uh, before I real quick, um, uh, just w- w- with with the Pats, they're gonna finish up their practices. Let's see how things go. Well, they on already Saturday. did. Uh, they're all, uh, they're they'll all probably done. just do a walkthrough tomorrow. And that's the it. games uh, Saturday. Saturday. So they're pretty much done. Let's see how things look like on Saturday. Um, going into uh, some basketball talk. Um. Actually, I do want to go back for a minute. I do. Uh, real quick, Kraft did not get in to the Hall of Fame. Um, I think it's only a matter of time before he will. Um, the Hall of Fame. Yeah, but the fact that Jerry Jones is in the Hall of Fame and Robert Kraft is baffling in- to me as well. Um, I, Robert Kraft's done more, has won more, but go figure. Well, so, because he built a huge stadium in Dallas, he gets in the Hall yeah, of Fame? Yeah, and because he's a Dallas guy, I don't know. So he did not get in. I think it's, it'll be a matter of time before he does get in. Um, it just wasn't his time this year. Uh, so that, that's a little bit of tidbit I wanted to mention okay. there. Going into some, some basketball. So uh, the news is that um, uh, Porzingis has plantar fasciitis. Uh, four to six weeks, I think is what I heard. Um, I will tell you. I don't buy it. I don't buy it either. I think it's all a smoke. I think this is the only way to get Porzingis to not play in the FIBA. Um, and why? Why, why wouldn't? 
Well, to these guys, especially someone of his stature, he's going to want to play for his country. And I believe that this is a, maybe he's got a, something, maybe a tiny bit wrong with him. But for the Celtics to just say he's going to be good for a training camp, that tells me that, I don't know, this, I, I, I just think this is their way of getting him to not play well, in the FIBA. It's one of two things. It's either they're optimistic about plantar fasciitis, which is a painful, correct, which is a painful injury. Uh, as we know, Prozzi Dude, I had, had that, man. And I've had yeah, that yeah. for like six years. Yeah, and it was yeah, painful. painful yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, we're going to get all the calls coming in, all the doctors <laughs> coming in and saying that plant- I, can't, I can't even spell plantar fasciitis. It's P L ant F itis. Foot. Foot issue. Right. So I, I clearly my spelling is not my MO. Um, so. I it's gonna it's, it's I, I think it's one of two things. I think it's what you just mentioned, or it's the fact that um there is something going on there and they're being optimistic about his return. Um I really hope it is just a, so, so really you, so you want some opinion. good stats. You want you want something so he so again, now here we go. Well, we should have never, never traded Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart. What idiots. Okay. So for the Marcus Smart fans, here's some facts. Okay. So the quote is KP is never healthy, talking about Kristaps Porzingis. Yep. He's an injury risk, okay? These are the games played over the last four seasons for each player. We'll start with – what do you want to start with first? Let's start with KP. Okay. Here we go. 1920 season, 57 games. 2021 20, season, 43 games. 21-22 season, 51 games. Last season, 65 games. Marcus, 1920, 60 games. 2021, 20, 48 games. Uh, 21, seven, uh, 21, 22, 70 games. 22, 23, 61. So they're not as widespread. Whoa, whoa, look, look how many. Marcus has had his fair share of injuries, too. Yes. Okay. He, and and I, I just needed to bring that up because Marcus Smart hasn't been healthy for freaking nine years here. He has. And Marcus, because of the nature of how he plays, you know, hoop. It's just physically demanding on the body of, of his. Well, he's a stocky guy, but he's not a big guy. No. And he's taken his beatings, his poundings. And last year, he had a really big lull. He never got out of it to the point where they they wound up trading their blessed, homegrown, Marcus Smart, sixth overall pick in the 2014, 15, 16 draft, whatever draft that was. And they got a guy in, in Prozingas. I hope that – I didn't even look at it that way. I hope that they are just blowing smoke up their butts because of FIBA being here and allowing him to not play. Well, just think about last year, Gallinari, right? Wanted to play for his country. I, I, again, these guys take playing for the country very seriously. They do. They definitely do. So, again, he could be hurt. I don't know. I don't work for the Celtics. Don't know. Can't tell you. But I'm just telling you what I think, and I think it's all smoke and that this is their way of telling him you're not playing FIBA. Yep. Concentrate on the NBA. So, there, on yep. so there's your little situation there with, with 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 some hoop talk. I mean, there isn't much going on, um, but the, other than the fact of you know, Porzingis is a big talk here, and people are already naysaying. And I'm going to say that hopefully it's nothing serious, and hopefully you're right, Cope. Yeah, and you know what? And again, I'm so sick of seeing. It. Listen, yes, it does. It looks so weird for Marcus Smart to be in Memphis Grizzly uh, clothing. Well, guess what? That's who he plays for now. That's get how, over it, okay? Just, how it is. just get over it. I, I, the Celtics were capped out, if you want to use that word, capped out with Marcus Smart. They weren't going any farther than what they have already gone. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you got to try something new eventually, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, totally. And I will tell you that the window for the for, for the Celtics, there is a short window. It's closing. For them to be able to win a championship. At some point, they're not going to be able to keep all these three players. Correct. Because if you think there was a big payday for for – for Brown, there's going to be a bigger payday for Tatum next season. It just it, it's right there. So they have a very small window to decide how they're going to run this team, and they're just trying to make it happen this year and bringing a guy like Porzingis and seeing if those pieces are going to help them along to be able to get to a championship. I think that, that's what it comes down to. Um, five zero eight nine seven four three zero four zero is this, the this call Jay. here. Um, G Man Chub never gave Danny Dimes that money and get and, well. And, well, that's uh. That's an interesting point. I think most people felt that you I know, probably would have gave it to Saquon. You're right. You're right, Jay. I would have gave. Yeah. I would have gave the money more to Saquon. I think right? they. I think they gave you know Danny Dimes too you know too much money to begin with. But unfortunately, that quarterback market is extremely inflated, and it's really very top heavy. It's lopsided. Yeah, I mean, look. I mean, same thing for Danny Dimes. I, I, plenty of people around here don't want to give Mac Jones that type of money, but that's the type of money that he's going to command. 
And to go back, yeah, Smart is a dog, Jay. But guess what? Celtics haven't won shit with Marcus Smart on the roster. It's that simple. I don't care how much of a dog he is. It was that dog go. didn't do shit, right? It's it's that simple. Yep. What did they? What did Marcus Smart do this year? Again, he was the DPOY, or maybe I said that backwards. Defensive Player of the Year last year. He sucked defensively this year. Okay, sucked. Yeah, okay, he was not and when good. you needed him to do big in the playoffs and be the best defender on the team, he did it. Correct. He did it. It was time to go. Listen, I had been on, I had been off that bandwagon for quite some time. I did not buy into the defensive player of the year. I think that was the worst thing that could have happened because if he doesn't have defensive player of the year, maybe the Celtics move on from him last year into yeah. this year. I mean, I, I just don't know what else to say. I, I get it. He's been here so long. He was the most tenured Celtic, but it's sometimes it's time to go. It is. I was the biggest Paul Pierce fan, all right? I grew up loving Paul Pierce, okay? Yeah, it was a sad day that he went, but guess what? That was the best thing that happened to the Celtics. That was a they gift would that have kept... never gotten t- a Brown or Tatum. Correct. That was a gift that kept on giving. No question. No question. Um, what, what else you got on your agenda there? I know you have some, I know uh, you, you... Uh, we, we, we pretty much covered it. You know what I mean? Um. um I mean, do you want to talk to Socks? Oh, yeah. That's... You hear that? This is giving me like a nice like. It's a great massage. Come on down. And ladies and gentlemen, on as, we're going to change, clutch. We're go- <laughs> as we're going to change directions, I know you can't hear this. But there is some delicious spa music happening behind us. We call this watermarks. <laughs> and for those of you who are hoping to have a uptight person situation here, and, um, I mean, to go off, if you want to, I mean, you're right, Jay. I mean, I don't know if I want to give Jalen Brown that type of money, but I hate to say it. That is the way of life in the NBA. If you think Jalen Brown got a lot of money, wait till two years when other players who are better than him are due for the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. That's They're going to make right. probably double than what Jalen Brown is getting, right? The, the, the problem that we have here, Jay, is that the the collective bargain agreement with, an, with the NBA Players Association, the union, that's what they wound up Agreeing on, on. Yep. and signing on between owners and players, which is if they make first team NBA, correct, and they don't have that kind of contract. Well, no, if they make the if they make the all NBA team, all NBA team, right. first, second, or third, right, right. So you may, all right, all, all and NBA Tatum's is going to be more because he's made it twice. Already. And if you if you make it, that's the kind of contract that yeah. you get. And the story, and, but this is what the NBA wanted. See, it, it, they're going to make it harder now for the team teams like the Celtics to keep their core players, right? Because the NBA wants parity. They don't want all these players on one team, okay? Right, right. So some people are going to like it, some people aren't going to like it. But right. that's just how that's the way yeah. the NBA is going. You know, and, and and what they're trying to do is they're trying to avoid, uh, they're trying to stick to the cap, and they're trying to avoid a monopoly situation, which is which is really funny to me how all the how this all became a problem, the minute that LeBron James, no longer could build a supermax team. Yeah, you know, I don't think he would have been able to make the team that he made in with the Heat with this new collective bargaining agreement. So I find it funny how, as LeBron James is aging, how all of a sudden these more stricter these super teams are being phased out. Phased out, you know. And here we are once again. The big question coming on, coming up with um, with uh, the, the guy from Philly, um, it, uh, uh, listen, Hardman, right? Joe, yeah, and again, I'm, so you people that want to criticize the Celtics, perfect. Thank you, thank you. Criticize the Celtics for trading away Marcus Smart. Do you see what these dummies in Philly are doing? <laughs> these idiots in Philly. Knock, knock. Listen, James Harden does not want to play for you, okay? You should have traded him, okay? You should have done whatever you want. But again, Daryl Morey is such a great NBA executive. Look how great Daryl oh, Morey is. Yeah, I know. So now you're going to get James Harden again, who's not going to want to invest any of his time into this team. I can't wait. I hate Philly fans. Oh, this is going to be great. The demise of the Sixers. What process? Okay, that process is done. And guess who's going to be leaving Philly soon? Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid. Okay? Totally agree. So so th- this is huge. This is huge for Philly. You heard it right here now. first. Joel Embiid will not stick around. No way in hell Joel Embiid is going to stick around. He will not stick around. around. He, his, his miles are racking up. If you look at his odometer, if you want to call it that, his miles are racking up. He's having problems with the breakdown. There's a lot of demand for that guy to be the guy, and, and it's too much. And he looks around, and he hasn't sniffed a finals. Has, have they even made it to an NBA finals? I don't, believe so. I don't believe they have. No. So the Philadelphia 76ers, this is what happens when you make contracts with players like yeah, James Harden. I don't want to say that you're making a contract with the devil, but you get my point. You're, you're James doing, Harden's going to be 34 years old. You're going year. to make 34 it, years old. Um, you know, it, it, problems arise when those types of players enter your franchise. 
And the 76ers were so quick to want to bring somebody in to make a run for it. They had to have been morons to think that Embiid and Harden were going to be enough to get past the Celtics, let alone Miami. They didn't have it. Speaking of Miami, what's going to happen? Because believe it or not, the season's right around the corner. It really is. Right? The season's right around the corner. Training camp's right around the corner. What is going to happen when all this talk about Dame Lillard going to Miami doesn't happen? Is Pat Riley finally going to be on the hot seat in Miami? I'm just curious because Pat Riley, we always talk about this, keeps getting away with the shit that he does. He does not improve that team. All he does is sign people who aren't drafted or are drafted late in the second round. And, you notice and, that? And, and he got lucky. Yeah, but, but, here's lucky. My, but here's my point. Jimmy Butler's aging, okay? So as much as you want to say the Celtics – uh, championship window is closing. Well, guess what? Miami's is closing faster. Yeah, there are different types of windows. There, there are different types of closing, right? One is a closing situation because of age and miles, and that's what Miami has, and, which I think is a bigger problem. And Portland doesn't want Tyler Hero. Why would they want Tyler Why Hero? Does, I, I, again, oh my God, it drives me crazy, <laughs> man. Know. Portland's going to trade Damian Lillard for Tyler Hero. <laughs> are we hearing this? Tyler Hero. Folks, if you're a, a sports fan, and thanks for watching the show if you're new here. Think about what has been told with Tyler Hero in cahoots and talks and bringing in Lillard in that exchange. You need a heck of a lot more. And listen, Lillard, I've lost a lot of respect for already. He wants to say it's Miami or bust. And the Portland Trailblazers now kind of have this weird situation between a rock and a hard spot because now if they don't want a piece to the player but they think that but that's now, bs dude that, oh, sorry, i sorry that's, I that's bullshit I, i'm playing devil's advocate no i know but it's I, bullshit i know well if they don't want a piece to him how attractive are the portland trailblazers going to be for future big names going there if they didn't take care of their homegrown guy newsflash they have nobody wants to play for portland but, but the thing is they have nobody, taken care of him right they've, they've they taken have. care of him they don't own anything the Portland Trailblazers don't owe Lillard anything. They've paid every nickel, cent, and dime that he has been owed. He does not want to be there. And as far as I'm concerned with Portland, you take the heat and of whatever happens, no point intended, by the way. You take the <laughs> Are you heat, sure? You take the heat. Well, I don't know if you, I don't know what you think, boom. As a, as, a, as a business, don't you try to acquire as many assets as you can off your top asset, or do you just try to appease the asset? Why would you get ponies and, 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 and baby sheep for a, a horse that you're giving up? It doesn't make any sense. But Portland Trailblazers need to get legitimate assets to start rebuilding their franchise, and Damian Lillard needs to just deal with wherever he goes. And I'm so sick and tired of hearing Miami doesn't have enough pieces. Yeah, I need to get a third team involved. It's oh, that simple. Oh, oh, something along those lines. Correct. Like, that's what, what I was going to go. Right, is, yeah. is they need to get another team involved, and that's how, that's the only way they're going to make it work. There, there's no, that's the reality. There's of no the way. But it's, they it's, can make it happen within those two teams. It, it, there's it just, no way. It just doesn't make, it just doesn't make sense to me. I, I, again, he the, can the, want the, to go to Miami. Any better. Nobody's going to do anything. Exactly. Like, it's not going to change. The outcome. You're trading the a. Gonna lose. You're trading a <laughs> Cadillac for a Buick. <laughs> what are you doing? A '79, not even like a new right, one. right, right. It, it, one that you gotta pump the gas and flood the carburetor before you crank it. Like that's right. what you want. So Tyler Hero is a one trick so, pony. So, so this is what they're gonna do. So they're gonna. So okay, let's let's appease Dame Willard. Okay, let's let's do it. Let's, let's trade him for crap. Okay, hey fans. Come on down and see your Portland Trailblazers. We have shit. And now. We have the shit point guard and the poop stick center. Come on <laughs> down. Like, this is what I mean. I so Portland's going to do that. I mean, it's stupid. They will never get out of that hole. They've already been a franchise that's had some issues. I mean, really, let's be honest. The Portland Trailblazers, with the exception of a couple of years, their biggest success, we're going back to the 90s with Porter and Clyde Drexler. Yeah. And, and, and well, actually, they, Dame, Damon Stoudemire was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was. But I'm saying, but that was the team that they, they, they haven't been relevant in quite some time. And now you're trying to put yourself in a hole to a piece of player that you don't owe anything to them. And correct. You, and listen, you I'm do, not telling that they don't like the guy. No, but, but they do need assets. But you don't just say, hey, I'm going to give you Damian Lillard for eight first round picks. You need to get something back in return. Or else you're running not... an NBA organization. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. It, it, it's ridiculous to me, the whole talk. But with the Celtics, obviously, it's going to be exciting to see how KP plays amongst you know the, the two Jays and what this team is going to look like. I think the second year of Joe Mazzula, with having the experience now on that bench and looking down with a guy like Sam Cassell and the guy that came in Again. from um, the guy that came in from college, Charles Lee. Charles, thank you very much, Charles Lee. 
Uh, clearly, Jay, Jay Rizzo does not like uh, Tatum and Brown. He's a big Marcus supporter. Apparently. Well, well, I mean, look, there are a lot of people who are like that, but you have to admit at this junction, Tatum and Brown are far superior. Yes, you are paying for a, a, a Jalen Brown who unfortunately has a terrible left hand and cannot cross the ball over but, and doesn't make clutch free but throws. Jay, he, but, but, but you have to understand that, you, that, but, that that's but the here's my question. But, that here's, you need. but here's my thing. To keep Jalen Brown's not going to be here that the life of that contract. I don't think so. Either. No way is he going to be here the life of that contract. Tatum the Celtics the had no choice. They had to sign him. He got his money. Now the Celtics can trade him, and guess what? Brown will be content with it because he's getting his money no matter where he goes. Exactly. So you have to understand, Jay, that that decision was we need to keep this asset. We need to pay for him up front and hoping that on the tail end there'll be residual value coming Correct. back and someone will then eat the remainder of that contract. The reality is – How do you trade that contract? Simple. There's, that's going to be one of the cheaper contracts in two years. Yep, that's what it's going to come down to, Sean. That what's going to happen with that contract is the players up and coming, the Tatum's, Tatum's and, going to make know, way more than you know, Brown next year. Uh, Blanchero, you know, uh, you know, all these guys. Who, the, the kid that played, the kid that was playing in the U.S. national team. Um, uh, he probably has a couple of years on, on that rookie deal. I think it's like a point guard. Who does he play for? That's based in my mind now. Um, doesn't matter who it is, but whatever it is, all those players are going to want more bigger, and more, bigger money. And more, and so, more. And, and right now, do you think? You could have gotten two really good players for that contract instead. I just don't know who see, would be available. See, I do. I think they could have gotten, but no, but, some great cast members. But I to, think to I, complement I, Tatum better instead of keeping one who is hit or miss. But I, I a think lot of I, the time. I think they tried, which is why it took them I, forever. I to just get don't that think there's anything done. available. No, I don't but, think there's anything no, available. But I, I think they tried. Think there about definitely it. Definitely key players that don't yeah, want but, to play with their ass. Yeah, but, but think about are. it. You know, Brown didn't sign that contract at midnight when he was able to. It took right. them a while. I, I believe the Celtics were trying and trying and trying, and then they were like, you know what? We can't get anything. We have no choice. I'm with you. I it. would have loved to have had two solid assets for that dollar amount. I think so. I, and I, 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 I it think it been, could have been pulled off. I just don't know who was available. Correct. There wasn't a lot of names being sprung around, and, and I agree with Colby. There was so much time. It wasn't like they were jumping on. It wasn't like they the didn't Wingham, jump on it. It right wasn't away. when the New England Patriots, when they drafted Matt Jones, the pick was in in like three seconds, <laughs> right? <laughs> it, it, you know, it, it, it was very obvious. It, this situation. It definitely was. Three seconds. Ah. Yeah, three seconds. I'm actually all done, sweetheart. I'm not sure if you know this. <laughs> the pick is already in, <laughs> you know? So, um, you know, all I'm saying is. Yeah, maybe uh, Halliburton, Sean. I can't, but, but again, the, the point is. It's going to the, the it's going to explode. The NBA dollars and cents that you like to use, yep. the money being thrown around within the next couple of years is going to go through the roof. That Jalen if Jalen Brown plays at, at a solid level, I'm talking about 20 plus points a game on average. If he starts making NBA teams like all team NBA, um it's going to be a situation where I think in a couple of years that that contract and the years remaining on the contract, what is it a 5 year? I believe so, yeah. Okay, so if they got to pay whatever it is for three years, I think there's going to be somebody there that's going to want to take them. But I think I honestly think it's a two year window this year and next year. And that's what I think too. All right, because I've always thought because then Tatum's Tatum's extension that he's going to sign after next season will kick in, and that's the he doesn't perform, which we all know these players once they get paid, performance goes out the window, injuries come into play, everybody everybody settles down. Now they're not going to get somebody to eat that contract. Well, if he's like playing, yeah. Well, if, if he's, he's playing, playing terrible, playing then like that's he's a different playing story. Now, okay, you might have a shot, but if he needs to play better, well, he, he, well and he's playing consistently better. But here's here's my thing: they traded smart, right? Yeah. So now it's either you put your big boy pants on and you show the world that you and Tatum are the leaders of this team, right? This, this is the so excuse they, making is running out of time. Exactly. As well. they, the to me, they cleared that out. out. They yep. got rid of Marcus, so now there's no more excuses. Here you go, guys. You have the keys to this to this franchise. Once Tatum gets paid more, it's going to change. Smart's going to change. I mean, uh, Brown, Brown's, Brown's going to change. change. I think so too. I mean, like, I, he's going to be like unless oh, I unless was the man now I'm not unless I, the, I think he has that mentality. I will tell you this for, for fans who are not J- Jalen Brown fans. There's, there's a lot of them. I want to tell you this: your best bet is hope that the Celtics win a championship, because now with the championship in his belt, he may say, <laughs> "I got a ring." I can move on now. It's okay. True. I I know. So I think if you want to get rid of him, be rooting for the Celtics to get Banner eighteen. Yeah, no, but I think they're always rooting for the Celtics <laughs> to get a Banner. But, but what I'm saying when 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 the guy like that is not performing in the big games, yeah. you well, can't get one. Well, he's going to have to get paid like that. Well, that's, that's the problem. Well, now there's no more excuse for Jalen Brown. I think the thing about Boston not accepting him. 
Boston accepts you. They know who you are. Boston has decided to pay you, even though it didn't happen on the 12th and in, in the hour one or two of age, you know, free agency and signings. However, they wound up signing him. And I do think that time period between day one and day whatever it was that he got signed, I think you're right. There was a lot of effort of maybe is he going to be the guy, even though even though Stevens had said that you know they wanted to keep the asset. Of course. So I mean, ultimately, they were going to keep the asset. Come out and say, Obviously, he can't. Hey, we don't want Chandler. Right. So of course, he's going to go say that, right? <laughs> of course, he's going to go say that. So I think if the Celtics are able to win a championship and it's now two years down the road and it comes time for the well, Robert to meet the road with Tatum, I think that contract is going to be a bit more attractive. Assuming he may, again, assuming that he's going to be able to play but, at that same level. And Boomer, here's my thing. You're right. But they can always – there's always a way to get rid of it, right? So, all right, you want to trade Brown? It's all right. Guaranteed money in there. Oh, yeah, but my point is throw in Robert Williams, right? So my point is if the Celtics really want to get rid of him, there's ways around it. This, some team will take him. Trust could, me. Could be Derek White. Yeah, somebody will definitely take him. There's yeah. definitely teams out there. I mean, you just, you, just can't, you just can't trade. Hey, we're just trading Jalen Brown. you gotta, you got to throw shit in. Correct. Is the yeah. problem. Yeah. Well, it's not so much that they can take him. they got to be able to afford well, him. Well, I, 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 look at these other players. These other teams overpay these players ridiculous money already. I mean, if Golden State yeah. can, can, can do what they did and be over the luxury tax by, 90 by, million. by a lot of money, it's, anybody can do it. Yeah, and, and again, I think we'll see. It's gonna. I think a lot of it's going to come down to uh, did they win a championship or did they not? And then on the flip side, someone may say, well, on the contrary, if they don't win a championship, that might entice Jalen Brown to say, you know what? I signed here. We had a couple of years. You're going to sign Tatum. We're not winning one yet. I'm out of here. Listen, so uh, it could go either way. Listen, either I, way, Jalen Brown's not going to stay here and, for the and, whole time. And, his, and, his, and I have a gripe with, with Tatum, and this is my gripe. This is my personal gripe. It's probably going to sound crazy. But to me, Jalen Brown is more invested in the Boston community than Jason Tatum is. If you ever noticed Jason Tatum, all he does is his charity work is in St. Louis. His charity golf that he just had is in St. Louis. Everything is St. Louis, St. Louis, St. Louis. Listen, you're from St. Louis. We get that. We understand that. But you play for the Boston Celtics, okay? Why don't you do something for the, like, for the Boston community? Yeah, but how many people are doing stuff for the Boston community? You know what I mean? I, I can understand that hometown stuff. Like, yeah, but I'll never make what those guys make. Fun. Yeah, but I, I understand when, it to a T. You know what outside, I mean? Like everything I did volunteer wise was here. Every, you know yeah. I mean? Like you want to take care of home. So I can understand that to an extent. No, I get and that. I'm sure there's things that he's doing. He donates money and does whatever. I'm sure I mean, I would, I would hope doing, so. I would but, hope so too, but, but I don't hear much about, of it. They're not talking about, cause he probably might, he might just drop toys off. He might just drop, you know, nobody knew Dennis Rodman would buy out toys of us and drop her off at the children's hospital in Boston. Right. He's from Chicago, but every time he came here, that's what he did. Right. Yeah. So, Again, there's probably a lot of things out there that you won't hear about for the next 20 years. But be like, oh, people didn't know that he did this. I'm sure he's doing well. Stuff. Well, then because well, he's definitely that guy that's giving back. Well, no, then, he then, is. Then, I'm, I'm not. Listen, I'm not criticizing him for not giving well, back. Taking care of home, hometown. Well, I'm, I'm all for that. I, 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 well, I'm not saying that we're against that. I think what Kobe's trying to imply is if he's doing something around in the area, in the Boston area, and the Commonwealth, show people that you. Really he's certainly care. not doing it enough where he's posting it on a on a guy who's quite active. Quite on social media. social media. That's all I ever see. That's, That's all I'm saying. You know, it would be it, nice once in a while to see something. So that so are you doing it just to show face and check the box and not and not also oh, let's not advertise this. But yet you're going to, down to St. Louis and you want to advertise it constantly. It's quite lopsided. You know, it, it, I'm, again, certainly, yeah, that makes sense. certainly, certainly, yeah, I'm not, certainly, like, St. Yeah, Louis. That's, that's is all I'm trying hometown. to say. Like he's all. And, and St. Louis needs help. I mean, it's yeah, a, they're we, a big city. We know that. They need help, and they need guys like him. You know, just like Atlanta could use a guy like Jalen Brown. I mean, in my defense, in his defense, I wouldn't spend money. Well, that's money. a different topic. I've seen, what that, they do. I've seen what they do with the money that well, gets given away. That's, so that is a, politi- spend money that that is a political so. debate. Come check us out on Sunday morning <laughs> yeah. from, 10 to, from 10 to 11. Politics saying, talks. You know, maybe he gets a better write-off out when, there. When, I don't when, know. when Boomer and I retire from, from our, our, our day job, we can discuss politics. Almost there. It's almost. Oh, I'm crawling. So to close, the, I can feel and it. I'm <laughs> swimming up Ship's Creek like this, and I'm crawling <laughs> above float. float. I'm on the buoy like this. <laughs> All of you that know that we got to keep it at bay. We do. But someday so there will be a political talk on this show, and it's going to be very, very heated. Well, we're going to need another show. Though. We will. Like, nobody's going to watch this. I, 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 I'm already calling <laughs> it. Kobe's like, nah. No, I'm already calling it. It'll be 10 to 11 I'll on Sunday. I'll hold Sundays. the sign. <laughs> <laughs> what sign? The one in the back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give a boom one. Amaral, the city council. Um, so, But again, like I said, that was just that's just my personal gripe. Yeah. As, so, 
as, as Tatum is the guy, we know he's the guy yeah. for the Celtics. So I just be the guy in, in in the Boston area too. That's all. Let's flip some areas now on our last topic here we're going to go into before we wrap up the show. And it's been quite a good show uh, and talking quite a bit. So we're really happy to be back. Again, check us out every Thursday. For now, we are here from 6 to 7. I say for now because our original time frame was Mondays at 6.30 to 7.30, Correct. I believe. So we might go back to that. Especially but, during football season. But during football season. But we'll see how things unravel, you know. But right now, it is Thursday, 6 to 7. And 508-974-3040. is the number here. 508-974-3040. You can always text it, too. And you, can always, yeah, you can always text it here as well. And you're watching Coming in Clutch Sports. And we also have our Facebook page. Don't forget to like it. Don't forget to share it. You will see this show on there very shortly, and it will be shared daily to ensure that you get a chance to see our ugly faces and my Portuguese tone. So moving on to the Red Sox. Now, on our last segment, for those of you who have been waiting for Red Sox talk, yes, baseball is in full-fledged and full effect. And some of you may look at this as the dog days, which I don't think it is. I think we're surpassed that now with football here in in, in, in full effect with training you know, with training camps. Especially, and, you know, the second week September yes. starts, forget right. about it. No one's going to care about baseball. So your Boston Celtics. Red Sox. Uh, Boston Red Sox. I'm sorry. Your Boston Red Sox. Um, have been a team that's been criticized, and rightfully so, with high, how High Bloom has run this team. Yeah. And amazingly enough, um, up until now, up until today, today, and yesterday, and yesterday, <laughs> they're they're an above five hundred team with a couple of games out of the wild card spot. Here is my concern on this Red Sox team. They are now going to get a very difficult part of their schedule. It's going to be very very hard. It's and I'm not even BSing. Like we're talking like Dodgers. I think it's yeah. Uh, so they go to New York this weekend. Then yeah. they go to uh, Houston. Houston, yeah. And then they're home to play the Dodgers, and I believe Houston comes in again after that. So yep. it's it, it's intense. And I'm not worried about the Yankees. I mean, as much as as much as we they have major problems. They they have a lot. I think they have a lot worse problems going on. They have a lot of issues going on with it. So the the Red Sox obviously are going to want a lot of things to be proven to see can they win these these games that are going to matter for their division and for their and for their hopes and aspirations this year. Certainly, they're not, they're not a team right now that people are viewing as being a World Series champion. No way. But I will tell you this. They have taken care of business on the subpar teams, which tells me this, that the Boston Red Sox are not as bad of a team as the perception was in the beginning of the season. There have been players who have been consistently very good, Justin Turner being one of them. They got some of these guys back, some of these arms came, that came Yoshi, back. Yo- Yoshida's been consistent. Yoshida's been, yep. uh, I mean, think about Jaron Duran, who's who a guy last year, I was like, I think I'm done with the Jaron Duran experiment. Came out of nowhere, and he's proved me wrong this year. Yep, and, and, and Whitlock is back. And what about what about Casas, with the start that he had? Yeah, what people are ready to say ship him back to AAA. But that guy is that guy's locked in. That guy is. is a hitter, man. He is. He's definitely. We we had mentioned that. Remember, I had said that he had that massive bomb home run that was like four hundred seventy five thousand feet that left the park in three seconds. Yeah, like that kind of power just doesn't happen. Exactly. All yep. right. So, but we need to see more of that. So, yes, I am, I'm not telling you that I don't like to see the youth. I still feel they should have sold and got in and been more aggressive at the trade deadline. Correct. You had pieces you could have gotten that went elsewhere that way they did not give them much. This farm system thing drives me nuts. This farm system thing drives me nuts. A lot of statistics came out recently on what their, on what their farm system was, and they're like eighth overall in baseball. Can I ask you a question? When was the last time you went to Worcester to watch a game? Never. Exactly. Exactly. Never. Okay? Exactly. So this, you need to have professional ball-ready players on your roster if you want to and, win. And you know what sucks is Otani being a free agent this offseason. Think about it, man. They're, they're not going to. They're the Boston them. Red Sox. They're okay? not going to get They have all the money in the world. He'll go to a team like Houston. No, I, I know. But my, point, Dodgers. but my point in this is go get them, right? That's all. Go get him, dude. Go make a run for him. That is a generational. That's all. That that is a generational player. If Even if you're in the talks of oh, they're talking to Otani, that will make my heart happy. I would give up almost anything, if not anything. I would probably sell half of Fenway Park and go down to fifteen thousand seats or whatever the heck the seats on there for him. For him, all right. That is a generational talent that you need to be involved in. You're the Boston freaking Red Sox. And that's when a guy like Dromb- you know, Dombowski being here. He would have done it. He would have done it. He would have gone for it and tried to make a valiant effort. 
you know, and here we are. High Bloom wants to hold these pieces and hold these pieces to the point where he wants to run this the, the, the Red Sox on a budget. And there's no need to run it on a budget unless John Henry, John Henry, right? Who's asleep at the wheel? Unless John Henry wants him to run it that way, and no, he, being it, the owner, and I don't, and I, to be I, honest, listen, I don't know John Henry because he's so out I, of touch. I'm all done with John Henry because clearly he. So they want to put an expansion basketball NBA team in Vegas, and he's the rumored to be the owner. Okay, the guy that's going to do it. Clearly, that's what he's focused on. His portfolio. He just bought the Pittsburgh Penguins, right? Yep. Can't spend money. We bought Pittsburgh Penguins. He has that soccer team. Was it Liverpool? Yep. Um, and clearly the Red Sox are taking what the second or third seat, right? And again, if, if that's fine, then sell the team, go focus on your other assets I, and go sell the team. Right? I definitely think because this fun. is Boston, dude, right? And it, again, you're right, youth, but don't you need to have a mixture of youth and talent, veteran talent on a baseball team? I believe that's what you should have. Yes, you can't just okay, I'm gonna so you can't just have these high ticket prices because they're the highest in all baseball. And then don't want to have any talent to show for it. Right. Yes, they have youth talent coming up. Okay, but I'm not gonna be here forever to wait for this. The, the Red Sox need to have a now mentality. They should always have a now mentality. And, and, and I think the farm system, as as intriguing as it is, with with some interesting prospects, I think it's overrated. I think their farm system is being looked at and and over oversold to the media oversold to fans to say to just sit and wait. And I will tell you why I am more patient with the Patriots versus the Red Sox. The Red Sox have money. They don't need to worry about the cap. It's a different sport. There's no cap in baseball. Right? It doesn't exist. The Red Sox can spend what they want when they want. And the reason why I'm in, I am impatient with the Red Sox is that the Red Sox – need to be and should be a contending team. And as much as I don't like the, the Yankees, same thing goes for the Yankees. I've mentioned this a million times in all the shows we've had here over the last couple of years. There are certain teams in every league that need to be good and relevant. The Yankees and Red Sox need to be good. It's good in the for Mets. business. I mean, the listen, Mets are killing but, baseball. Yeah, but I, you know what? I, I, they I and look, yeah, but I give the Mets credit for I trying to spend money, man. And, 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 you're right. They spent a lot of money. It didn't work out, but guess they what? dumped it. They tried. They tried. I got to give them credit. And, and the Red Sox are sitting here. So, you know what it is? I feel like the Red Sox, the Red Sox, are, it's like playing Texas Hold'em, right? The Red Sox are playing with Texas Hold'em. <laughs> Let me give you my crazy analogy, okay? <laughs> okay. They're holding their cards. So people are going to get into an accident watching this. Listen to this. They're holding the Red Sox are holding their cards, and they want to throw a bluff in there and make it sound like they have face cards and aces <laughs> all the time. What you really have are deuces. You have nothing. <laughs> you have nothing. Stop holding it. You need to be folding all the time. You need to be putting and folding and getting rid of these prospects to bring in aces and bring in face cards. They're playing stupidity. They're playing Texas Hold'em with bluff, and they're wearing the sunglasses to not show their face and to keep their poker face on, and it's not working. It's not working. Their ratings are terrible, and I will tell you, the announcers, can we please, the, these announcers on Nesson, <laughs> Nesson is, is a joke. Nesson is an absolute joke. You know, Tim Wakefield loved the guy to pieces, a true Red Sox guy. You know, Kevin Yuke Yuke, nice guys. <laughs> These guys are, are, are smelling the Red Sox farts every game that they announce. Listen, you know who's the best guy on Nesson? And it's the post game is Papabon. Did you? I know. Pat, I agree. Boy, did you see what he was I saying agree. the other day? But that's what we need. Someone who's not going to go in front of the camera and be like, the Red Sox are great. Every move they make, like Tom Karen. Tom oh Karen's my God. been there for so long because that's what he does. Oh, my God. Oh, yes, they're great. They're great. I love that. And he, Pat Wabon, made them feel so uncomfortable when they were doing that. I love that. Even Jim that. Rice was like, he was oh, shaking. He didn't yeah. know what to do. Yeah. It, you know, Tim, Tim Wakefield, they had a loss. When they lost, uh, was it the bottom of the ninth? They had a game. I forget what game it was. I don't know if it was against the Braves or. It was, I forget, Detroit. I don't know who they played against recently. And he's like, oh, man, tough loss. They almost won. Almost won. <laughs> what is this? It, 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 is let's, this put the, let's put a check in the almost won box. This is, is this T-ball? <laughs> this is Little League? I just think, like, 
I almost had you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you almost had me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you never perfect. had me. Yeah, yeah, no. You never had yeah. your car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so That's true. How I see that. That's <laughs> when when Tim Wakefield said that. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me, Tim Wakefield and Kevin Euclid as well. These guys are so far up the Red Sox asses. Like, oh. Josh Garnett, it was so high pop up, you know. Yeah. And it, oh, oh, she was hand grenades and fast. Yeah. That's what I hear. On that. Yeah, you know, it, it was oh. unbelievable. Did you see? Oh, man, poor Devers. That ball just ate him up. No, Devers is making 30 something million. I don't want to see no ball eat his ass <laughs> yeah, up. Exactly. Get in there and make the damn play. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Catch the ball. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So look, weird. Well, <laughs> amazingly enough, put a cup on if you're scared. Amazingly, <laughs> but amazingly enough, their record, they're still in this damn thing. I will now see the true colors of the Boston Red Sox, and let's see if they can win some games in some series against some the, the true contenders yeah, of like, this year. I think they still can. I still think they can win some of these well, games. They're finally getting healthy, but I mean, it looks like Sale had a shitty day today. He, he pitched today. He looks like he, he got yeah, he got rocked, you know. But you know, some of the other arms, you know, like I said, Whitlock came back. Yeah, Hawks you know, coming back this week, right? And you know, it's Trevor Story. Not right, not ready yet, quite ready yet. Well, I went to the game on Sunday when he went four for four, he had four doubles. <laughs> he did, he did, he, he won the playing pretty good that game. That's right. So, again, I know people don't hate the fact they hate the fact of well, our, our, our free agency, you know, a trade deadline is our players coming back from free agency, which I don't like either, but it is what it is. So, anyway, wow, that's all the time that, that we have. We're, time we're actually has way over, by. Jesus. I'm yeah, we are way over. So, um, let's see what happens with these Red Sox. <laughs> Let's see what happens with these Red Sox. Let's see what happens with this game on Saturday. Kobe and I are going to be watching and dissecting some of the game of the preseason with a grain of salt. We'll be taking it. Um, salt, salt, salt. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll be checking it out and bringing it back to you. But that is all the time that we have for today. Thank you for everyone who was watching. We got up to six or seven live eyeballs, which is quite impressive considering we haven't been here. People have been waiting for us, Cole. They, we have arisen. Oh, uh, we got some. I, have new, a, I got some new names up there. And Sean, a, Sean, welcome. I'm doing an autograph um, appearance. Yeah, doing an autograph appearance. So Sean's a new guy. Yeah, Sean and Riz. So Sean, I don't know who Sean is, but I appreciate him coming on. Hopefully, we're able to address we got some Jordan, of the, Jordan, uh, Josh. I can't see that from me. Either Josh or Jordan. Oh, it, 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 Josh Sylvia, I believe is the name. Yep, yep. yep. Josh Sylvia. So welcome, fellas. Um, you know, I hope you guys enjoy the show. We're going to try to be here, try to be a little bit different than everybody else, be different than 98.5, and, and, and obviously be different than 103.7. So, uh, you know, that's, that's what we do. That's what we try to do. But don't go anywhere because there's another great show coming up in Fall River Raw. They do some good things, so don't wait and stick that's, around. That's you know, Tuesdays. Uh, which one? Oh, what's, what's, what's tonight? And I see Experiment. The Experiment. Right. I'm sorry. Forever experiment. Sorry. Exactly I, my I, point. See, he forgets. I am very forgetful. I apologize he, for those he didn't guys. Take he his remembers not, he's good with numbers. Yeah. Listen, yeah, yeah. Numbers is his thing. Yeah. English spelling bee. Yeah. I, I I was out in the when first he said a different show. <laughs> he meant just because he's Portuguese. He, he, <laughs> right. He didn't Sorry about that. You know, yeah. The forever. Dyslexic and Portuguese. Another word. <laughs> well, here's like, what happens. That's like reading Hebrew Portuguese. <laughs> well, it, well it, it really is. I will tell you that in spelling, when I had the spelling bee and I, and I was sitting there with my chubby chair, um, I, I would get knocked out in the first round and get a green eraser, foot eraser. Remember those? Remember those sneaker yes, erasers? Yes. That's what I got. My English is terrible. Listen, um, so that's that okay. The easiest contest to get out of and still win a prize. You're right. Like, you're, you're right. right. I, mean, I don't got to stand up there all the time. I can just sit down and watch. Yep. You're it. absolutely right. I got a prize. So, though. How, how to spell Portuguese? P O T. Good night. <laughs> Carry on. You know, I will. Port. P O R K A. Cheese. Cheese. Yeah. But stick around. Forward experiment is up next. And uh, we definitely want to thank everyone for watching the show. Like our page, uh, both of them, Eric B Media page and Coming in Clutch Sports is out there as well. You'll see this show again in the replay. So if you want to make more comments on how much we suck tonight, that would be great. And if you want to say how much we were good, that'd be even better. But either way, we take the good, the bad, and the ugly on the show because that's what makes sports great. But, of course, we cannot have the show, Cobo, without thanking our sponsor. Once again, we talked about it earlier in the show, um, rates, 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 and mortgages. It's the real deal. And Troy City will give you the best home buying experience at Troy City Mortgage, bringing you the best mortgage and options in Massachusetts and in Rhode Island, led by the great David Pereira. Here's a guy with deep knowledge local roots to your community and the expert solutions to bring you not a good, a better, the best, the best mortgage possible. Give him a call and give them a call at 508-207-5864. That's 508-207-5864. Fellas, that's all we got time for. 
We didn't do a great job. We'll try to do it again even better next week. But for now, I'm Nelly. I'm Colby. And we're out. inventory I have that you criticize me about for buying around Christmas time. Can we just celebrate the night? Should be should be easier to do even better next month. April is even better, guys. But in the meanwhile, yeah, congratulations. Great. Good job. Tomorrow we'll Good job again. Good job. <laughs>